This is Mr. Impact Wrestling and so Moose, and you're listening to the Irish Whip. Hookers? Hookers and Coke? Hookers and Coke, man. You're the only pro wrestler I know that wants to do the shit in the morning. Yeti, you're a f***ing moron. Put it this way, I think Sammy Callahan might as well just change his name to Invader I want to know why. Like, he can dodge any question. Like, I'll tell anyone that. You can tell me the f***, but I, I'm going to ask specific questions. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. WrestlingNewsSource.com all the rest of you yahoos are out there dilly dilly you little wankers. We're actually receiving real wrestling news. This is Brett screwed Brett. I'm Who are you to, to, to doubt El Dandy? Because this guy's a serious professional. Brett screwed Brett. Hold two arm bar. Hey, get a nice shot of the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hurst Helmsley. I hate you. I hate you. I hate your hat. I hate your t-shirts. I hate your wristbands. I hate your shoes. I hate your music. I hate the C-Nation. I hate everything that you stand for. So does rule. Yeah, they do. Taking a belt, I'd rather die than take an L. Y'all don't know how I felt. I be murdering the game. You just play with yourself. You kind of want to say my name, but you got no help. I believe in Mr. Chaos. I'm rocking the bells, but it's dinner time. Fuck, I'm going to help myself. I don't want one bite, bitch. I came for the plate because I'm hungry like a dude with no food for a day. I ain't really want to snap, but you rappers on the way down. I'm going to fight till my last breath. Never lay down. Hear you talking shit, but I don't care what you say now. Hustle till I hit a billion dollars any day now. I'm just on this podcast tip to hit a lick While you mumble mouth rappers on your knees suck a dick Claim to be a fighter but we know that you's a bitch Half you hoes ain't even writing all the lyrics that you spit I've been putting in work but y'all don't know what it is To work a 90 hour week just to feed your kids I've been down in the gutter, fight my way to the top Thanking God for all my people who ain't letting me stop 24 balls in and I'm only getting better Ho, sticking up the whole rap game What's up TNA Mafia, it's a Yeti uh, we're hanging out. Uh, Akira is back in the green room right now. That's part one. Um, happy to have you here. Uh, it's another uh, MLW interview we're lucky to have. Just, Man, this dude is super busy um, traveling everywhere you can possibly think of. Uh, GCW is where I, I love to watch him. Um, specifically uh, now with MLW. Um, this is from their website. So Akira is a new breed of fighter. Uh, one that I love. Uh, a death match, I guess you could consider, but also well-rounded uh, in a lot of other styles. Uh, marrying catch wrestling and death match fighting style, a seemingly unholy matrimony. Akira has brought together inoculism and a crazy death match stigmata of Junkasai. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. He calls this dangerous blend of fighting catch death. And uh, as most of you listeners know, I'm a huge fan of Drew Gulak. Um, I love catch wrestling. Uh, I love... Um, anytime anybody can, can combine those two. Um, so without further ado, man, uh, welcome Akira, man. Thanks for taking the time. And I, I, I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, our, our, uh, short backstory, like I'm a huge CZW fan. So it's been a long time since I've been able to see even the other night, uh, Mancer and Ricky yeah. Shane page going at it. And to me, like I tweeted out, it was, it's such a great platform for people that aren't accustomed to it or have ever seen it. And I love the production in it. It reminds me of like early TV. Yes. So mm-hmm. props to that, but welcome to the show, man. It's on, it's an honor to have you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, you're busy, busier than hell. Um, it, you got a cool, cool backstory, man. You, you got a cool backstory. Like you graduated college, correct? To me, that's amazing because I respect that. Like, I respect uh, somebody that's willing to do do whatever you, that you you wanted it, man. You wanted to chase it. You were tired of it. Like, I guess the, the follow up question is: Is does, do you t- are you in contact with your family? Do you talk to your family? Have you guys made amends? Are you? <laughs> is that uh, a, you don't have to answer the question, man. It's just one of those follow ups. Like, I, I 
I want to know, man. I just like you, you're chasing a dream. Are they are they understanding where you're coming from, or is it still difficult for them? Uh, I think with the success, it was easier for them to like my my dad and I talk a bit more, but it's still like a very strained relationship. I have very not um, like my, my siblings. I don't talk to uh, my mom and I do not have a great relationship at all. Uh, her and I. <clears throat> very often butt heads and it's just i've literally basically cut around my life like she'll text me and i was kind of like just read it and go not responding just because it's a very strained relationship due to a lot of stuff going back to when i was a kid and uh for me it's just like you're i'm gonna prove my point to you one way or another and if it's me not talking to you to show how you treated me as kind of you know caused this relationship to be strained that's how it goes. Um, like it, it was very much a toxic relationship of like, I would listen to like Iron Maiden and stuff like that. And she'd come downstairs, just trash my stuff and throw it. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, this is like in 2009, 2010, where it's like, this has been 20 years since that kind of attitude was a thing. I, I and eventually it like got to the point where I called her out for being like, like mommy, listen to Molly crew. It's the same shit. And then she, yeah. she kind of was like, uh, 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 and I just basically, like, I point out those, these little hypocrisies. I do it to my dad too. And it's just, it built for years and years and years and years to the point where, um, yeah, right now I'm just happy not to be affiliated and not to talk to them at all. Like my dad and I, I can talk to, but my brothers, I don't talk to my sister. I don't talk to, um, most of my family, I don't talk to them this point they think i'm kind of crazy they think what i'm doing is you know chasing a fool's errand a fool's dream and i'm content living my life without it right now you know and when the point comes where i can say this is my life and it's you know been my career and it's given me everything that i have which it has already in four or five years now but you know come down the line when i'm I'm sitting on a good nest egg and wrestling is all that I'm doing and wrestling and twitching is all that I'm doing. Then I can maybe go, here's what I've done. I've done it without you. You know, they've not invested a single dime into uh, my career. Um, they barely helped at all. The one I guess who would help, I'd say is helped the most has been my dad because at the end of the day, he saw how dedicated I was to it and said, okay, um, like you, I've got your back no matter what. So, Dude, I, I respect and appreciate your answer, man. That's, that's candid and it's from the heart. And I absolutely appreciate that. Uh, I work, I'm a preschool teacher by nature. Right. And I work in, uh, I guess you could call it an impoverished neighborhood. Right. So I have a lot of kids that don't have family or, um, have trauma, like a lot of trauma, like generational type trauma. So I can definitely relate to, to where you're coming from and empathize with that because that's, a it happens, man. It, it just happens. And it's not like, uh, it's, it's family and you know, you are, you're justified in, in feelings. And I feel like making those decisions are probably the, what was best for you at that time and gave you some sort of peace and be able to be centered. So you could focus on what you want to do, man. So I just, I appreciate it. That's a huge thing to say. And I respect it immensely. Thank you. Um, you're a huge fan of Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm, I'm <laughs> like a, I, I was in Japan, Japan for seven months when I was in the Marine Corps. This is, I'm going to date myself. This is back in 98. And oh, I had <laughs> never had a chance to, I was a huge fan of our product. Right. But I was so narrow minded to not understand that back then, like there was actually pro wrestling in Japan. So I started going to shows in Japan and I fell in love instantaneously because the way the crowd reacts, the way the matches happen, what you can do, what you can't do, um, clapping, whistling, whatever it may be, it was it was amazing to me. What makes uh, what brought you to that Shinsuke side of just when did you fall in love with that? I mean, I was watching that style back when I was like a kid. So in 1998, I was five years old, um, but like. My dad, my uncle, like they would record like old ECW, um, New Japan where you can get them like old, you know the the trader tapes or whatever. My uncle would have some of those, and I I probably traded uh, with your uncle at some point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I I would go and 
sneak those in the middle of the night and watch those when I could. Um, but it was like those, like the Takamishinokus, all those kinds of guys, like the Mudas, like I always kind of drew my eye more as a kid. It's the same with like with Bret Hart, like um, where Bret wasn't the most outspoken wrestler, but it was the, it was the body language. It was the facial expressions and it was the technical aptitude that Bret had and that all the, the Japanese guys had that it just, it, it clicked something within me. And I, it, back then it wasn't like a, you know, I'm a I'm a Korean Japanese white kid in the middle of Indi- of Indiana. It wasn't like a oh I connect with it on that level, but it was right. just like they're those they're doing something on a level that these big muscle meathead dudes are not doing that I appreciate. Um, but I, I it was always back then you know that I grew up like when I hit my like my teens I became more into music and kind of fell out of fell out of it with wrestling, which I mean it's just you know kid stuff, kid angst, you, you focus more on that and your own self-pity than you do other things. <clears throat> but then when I did go to college and like my freshman, sophomore years, when I became friends with the fr- friends that I'm still friends with today. And I sat and watched a, I think it was an NX, it was the NXT takeover where uh, Shinsuke debuted. <clears throat> nice. Because I was kind of deviating back into wrestling um, cause that was, I think that was, I don't know, was that before, that was before mania. So the, I, w- I was dipping my toes back in the, the year before at that Royal rumble. I had done some Royal rumble party. I just showed up and they were like, Hey, here's your number. And I somehow picked the one. I don't remember who the win- the winner was. And I, I just, I watched that NXT takeover and it was like, cool matches. It's fun. You know, wrestling's a bit different, much more action oriented than some of the, dog shit that i used to watch back that when i kind of felt like there was a lot of stuff where it was like rest hold because all all i knew was in reality because when you're a kid you don't process things of like oh this is wcw this is ecw this is new japan it was just like this is wrestling and in reality especially come the mid-2000s all there really was to me was wwe and I I got so bored with it, man. It was so boring. Like the John Cena shit. I was just like, I don't care. I'm done tapping out. I'm going to go focus on Iron Maiden and playing guitar and stuff like that. But it was around that time I I started watching again and I was go, okay, the NXT product is very different. Um, Even, even aspects of WWE were different. I said, okay, I'm kind of vibing with this again. And then I just fell down the rabbit hole of going back through ROH, going through, going back through ECW and just getting into the nitty gritty of it. And that, you know, which led into me seeing the matches with like, there was ROH with like Tanahashi, fuck um, AJ Styles. And just, I I was off to the races, man. Um, But specifically where wrestling really clicked was uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Sami Zayn. Uh, take over. I think it was Dallas, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And boom, boom. I was like, oh, I really love wrestling again. I really love wrestling. And it, I didn't click in my head of, I could do this, but I was like, I love it. I love it. I love it. There was, it was the, it was that unspoken charm that Nakamura had, where I was like, oh my god, wrestling is so much bigger and better than what it was when I fell out of love with it. There's yeah, more he's art. a he, his the entrance is huge. Like everything about him is huge. Like I'm, I've, I struggle as you do because I'm a I was, I still am. I guess you could say a huge NXT fan. For the first five years, I didn't miss an episode, and I watched every time they had technically a pay per view. Black and, and gold was special, man. Black and gold was special. Oh, it was just un. I would I would sacrifice almost anything because it was true. Like you know, Finn Balor and Shinsuke and all these people that I just was like, man, that is they are they're, they're and they did something and then it just it, like they lost it. And I feel you when you're talking about the 2000s because that's where when you're talking about your uncles, like that's that's that was my my rabbit hole. It was it was ROH, it was CZW. I mean, there was there was times where and Drew will probably kill me for this, but when he was going to school at Drexel and he was working at CZW, I mean, there was times that. Uh, we would talk and they were going through with DJ and Maven. They're walking through getting stuff for the show. And that's, that access was, was huge and it was fun. And it introduced me to a lot of 
things that made me appreciate the deathmatch stuff. And I think to them, it was like I was just a fan in Montana that was literally watching this stuff from thousands of miles away. And the only way I could watch this was through a screen. That's I always say this. This is the only I've been to like 10 live events, but I live in Montana and they're out here like once every four or five months. But I think I think that we're changing that. Uh, there's some people that are looking to come out here. I mean, there's, there's people that are interested in it. So it's, it's, it's cool to me to be able to, um, one, like talk to you about those influences of Shinsei, because if I didn't have that, like if I didn't have that passion through NXT, that's what restarted me. It kickstarted me hard because I, I bought into the characters. Right. And I started watching wrestling. Like I was 10 again, like I stopped just, I put everything aside and I was like, man, I just want to watch the story. I want to watch them tell the story. And it was perfectly laid in a lot of times. Sometimes it missed, but it just, mm-hmm. it was perfect for me. So nothing, I get it when you say you fell out. Nothing is 100% in what we do, man. Because it's always, there's always some weird audible. Something could happen. But for me, why I loved that Nakamura and Zayn match so much is why I like a lot of uh, the Japanese presentation more is it's, the story is done in the ring. The promos and everything else that you do after or before is just extra stuff. I can watch that match and understand the story from beginning to end. The old guard out with the new guard. And it was just perfect. Perfectly done, perfectly executed. Had them had the crowd in the palm of their hands. And it was just quintessential pro wrestling. If it like if there was matches that I could present to um, someone who isn't a fan of wrestling, I can go, yes, sit down, shut up, watch this. Sami Zayn versus Nakamura. And if I would be like, okay, do you want to sit and watch something more epic? Okay, I'll sit them down and I will say, you're gonna watch Kazuchika Okada versus Katsuyori Shibata, Sakura Genesis. Sit here, watch it, don't say a word, don't keep, keep your eyes on the screen, just watch and talk, talk your way through it. And yeah. I'd, I'd be like, there's, there's going to be something there that you're going to go, whoa. Specifically in that knocker, in that Okada versus Shibata match, there's like 50 things that you can go, whoa, to. Do you feel like, I was having this conversation, because my wife's actually going through that right now. She has only been a fan for like three years, so she's she's starting to go down some of those rabbit holes. And the other night we were uh, watching MLW, and we were talking about ring sizes like the difference in ring sizes and, and how that either helps or hinders, um, you know, whoever may be in there working at that time. How do you have to change? Like, are there, what, without really going too much into detail, like how much do you have to change between knowing what size the ring is and what you're going to do? It's just, it's just awareness of where you're in. I prefer the larger rings. I hate smaller rings because I think smaller rings just look, I think, a little silly. And I like the bigger, grander ring sizes, like the New Japans or the Noahs, where it's just like it's big. They've got the, you know, they've got the turnbuckle pads. They've got the, uh, they got the, the, the mats with all the uh, the sponsorships on them. When it's bigger, I feel like it's just, it's presented better and it looks better. Um, but you know, everyone has their own preferences. Some people like the the 16s. Some people like the 18s. Me, I like the 18s or the 20s. Like ICW, like sometimes the ring just seems enormous, and it just seems like you know, there's so much room to play around and do things. Smaller rings to me just feel a little bit more constrained. But some people like them because they don't have uh, they they don't have good cardio. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so death matches, man. Um... I read where you were asked to just do it one night, like yeah. you, no preparation, no nothing, like no, you were booked. Like it wasn't really a booking. It was like, hey, do you want to do a death match? And you're like, yeah, why not? I, so um, I went to uh, GCW in 2019 and I went to the infamous, they said it couldn't be done. Uh, June Kasai's return to America. Watched him versus Alex Colon, and I rode with Alex all the way to the show and all the way back. Never met him before the day in my life. And little did I know the impact that he and uh, Kasai Sun would have to my life. Uh, went there, had never seen a death match live, never... I, I, I'd seen, like, 
Necro versus Joe. I'd seen some death matches like my trainer and I would watch some and he would he would have me understand the the art and appreciate appreciate it. But to me I was like, I could never do this. Oh my goodness. Um and to me it was a lot of like guys just throwing shit out of each other. And I was just like mm, whatever, you know. But then I watched that match. I watched two matches. I watched <clears throat> Nick Gage versus Schlack where they just beat the absolute dog shit out of each other, yep. where I was like, this is two monsters just going to war. And I understood. I was like, it clicked for me. I was like, I get the story. It's cool. Then I watched Kasai and Cologne, and it was just like fireworks. It was like an orchestra was playing in the back of my head as I was watching it. I was like, it's pro wrestling. It's pro wrestling, but even crazier. These guys are pro wrestlers, but they're tougher than pro wrestlers. And that's deathmatch wrestling when it's done to, to its best. You know, you if you, re, you watch uh, Kasai Sun's documentary, you watch uh, read his book, <clears throat> and it's he even basically says that it was like his dad would point out like ah, that's fake, that wouldn't hurt, that's okay, and he's like oh yeah, I'm gonna make sure you never say that again. That and literally that was my when I like I heard that quote and I was like that's essentially my entire philosophy when I do regular pro wrestling or deathmatch wrestling. I'm gonna make sure that you go that hurt. The whole time. You you never second guess. But I watched that match and it was just like it was the epiphany. It was um it was it's like my the zeitgeist to my vision quest of, of, right. pro, of pro wrestling. And it was through there that um the person I was with, Aiden Blackheart, got a text from John Wayne Murdoch and Reed Bentley. It was like and they were like, Hey, do you want to go to Mexico? And Aiden said, Uh yeah, and he looked at me goes. Hey, Kira. Okay, yeah. You wanna go to Mexico? Yeah, sure. You don't you don't there's a spot on the card, but you know, I was like, I don't I don't care. I'll go to Mexico. I've never been to Mexico, I've never been out of the country a day in my life. And that basically led to the day of hopping the car. Hey, hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Reed. Um let's go to Mexico. Went to Mexico, uh, went to Monterey. And never been there in my life. Had my regular wrestling trunks, these little like young boy trunks, knee pads, kick pads, and um, I was dressed in a very nice suit. And I, they got there and like, hey, you don't have a spot on the show, but you know, if anything happens, we'll let you know. Go, okay, cool. I'm not worried. You know, I'm here to be here. It's cool that I'm here. And then uh, we get to the hotel, and a bunch of luchadors thought I was very pretty. And they wanted they 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 asked the guy muy guapo muy guapo. They asked the guys they're like, hey, is it cool that we can go and have sex with him? And they're like, no, you can't. No, he's a young boy. And they go, oh, okay. And then they're like, hey, uh, do you want to be on the show? Yeah, okay, we got one spot though. It's a death match. It's glass, fire, barbed wire, me. You got weed? Yeah. Right. We got steel? Yeah. Let's do a fucking death match, bro. And uh, went out there and basically in my in trunks, I was basically looking like Jeff King, if anyone knows who Jeff King is. <laughs> uh, and went out there and I had probably the the craziest experience uh, that anyone ha- ever has for their first death match. My first tube shot I ever took wasn't a single tube. It was a bundle, this like, like the size of a giant log. That it's huge. Final, it was huge. Final destination style. And I had no idea it was coming. It hit me in the back. And it was like, it was like an out of body experience for a moment. Cause I'd never felt anything like that before in my life. But then when the blood started pouring over my head, as I told the dude in the ring, a uh, sick boy, who was like my wrestling uncle, I told him like, st- I said, stab me in the face, face motherfucker. And he looked at me like, Stabby just pouring, and my, my Aiden was in the match too. And he looks up as he's fighting the guy, and he, he goes to check on me. He's worried, and he sees the blood on my face, and he screams and starts swinging on the dude. He's like, "Okay, Akira's fine. Don't worry about it." And after that, man, it was just off to the races, you know. And then I had my first death match in America. Nearly died. Um, I got that was brutal. Yeah, it, there's so many infamous clips of it, but like it was me getting thrown through a pane of 
untempered glass, which I didn't know there was good bath glass or bad glass. You know, how That's you bad know? glass. And just a giant shard just cut my inner thigh. Um, I was basically this close away from cutting an artery and being a dead person. Uh, didn't know that until the doctor was like, yo, you were close. And I go, oh, okay, that's cool. I, this is also while I had a, of a cut basically just on the on the tip of my elbow. And uh, the, he, the doctor had his finger shoved inside and I could see him doing this, the skin to make sure there's no glass. He's like, do you feel that? And I go, no. He goes, okay, yeah, there's no glass. But he's like, you almost died. And I go, okay, cool. He's like, you're very nonchalant about this. And I go, I'm here, man. What can I do? That's like my philosophy in life of, okay, I'm here. What do I got to do now? Even when I had like the, the, this one, I mean, we can see it. There's like a, no, I'll do this actually. Uh, that one right there. That's right brutal. Here. Yeah. Um, me versus Matt Tremont. I basically got shanked within a, with a light tube. And as this is like five minutes, the match, I just stop. I look down and go, you know, I don't have like this internal panic of, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I better go to the back, I better quit the match. I was like, I go look down, I go, oh, man, okay. <laughs> and I just, the ref was like, we should finish. I said, I looked at the ref, I said, if you call this match, I'm going to beat the shit out of you in the middle of the string. And the match continued for another 15 minutes. Right. Um, like literally, like. It looked like a chest burster came out of me. Um, but that was, you know, like my, my uh, foray into death matches was definitely not for the faint of heart and definitely was not one that I advised other people to do. <laughs> um, definitely, I worked with a colorful cast of characters, but those experiences made me who I am today, I would say, in and out of the ring. You, uh, so you bring up Matt Tremont, and that brings me to Ricky Shane Page and you and Raven and I Tremont's a beast and mm -hmm. I watched I, I, I think the only, like when it was su su supposed to be Tremont's retirement match when Ricky Shane Page and Matt Tremont went round on H2O Wrestling I to, to this day like I, I probably watch that thing once every other week because it's so brutal mm -hmm. um, I want to show this real quick uh, and and we'll talk about um, you, Ricky Shane Page, and the Raven Effect, and you guys on MLW. Is that cool? Yeah, it's cool. MLW Underground Tuesday only on Reels. What is that like, well, dude? When you watch that, what like what do you get emotion wise? What do you get? <laughs> oh God, dude! It's it's a it is a wide variety of feelings, um, but definitely as I was hanging there with Ricky and hanging there with Raven, I, I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> like five year old me would shit himself and like hey, yeah you know that that dude you're watching on on, on Uncle Gerald's VHS tape yeah you're uh, you're you're doing something with him on TV now <laughs> it's definitely something I go I'm not like uh, freaking out about it over but it's definitely like a very 180 moment of just like I'm I'm here right now huh. I always joked um, with Ricky that. Uh, like, because uh, his student and my mortal enemy, 
Atticus right. Coke. Um, I've always joked that Atticus is Raven, and I'm the dreamer of this of that dynamic. And as I sat there, I looked at Rick and I go, oh, complete role reversal here, complete 180. <laughs> it's like they got the wrong guy. <laughs> but it's definitely something where I sit there and go, life is very interesting. Life has a very funny way of playing these things out. And Raven and I sitting there waiting for it to go out to beat the piss out of whoever. I just sat there and go, ha. Huh. My, dad, my dad's going to get a kick out of this. <laughs> right? My dad texted me and he goes, hey, since your thing's on reels, I can actually watch. And I haven't said a word about when I'm actually, because he's, he's taping them all on DVR. And I haven't said uh, what I'm doing yet. So <laughs> he's going to he's gonna see very soon. And he's going to be like, what? And I'm going to go, yeah, this is what I'm doing, I guess. <laughs> is you, do you think that's, I like, do you feel validation in that? I mean, is that, I mean, it's, 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 is it, or is it more bittersweet? It's, I guess I don't, it's a, I feel like it's a bit of both, but I don't want to say validation. There's only validation when everything's all said and done and you come out cleaner on the other side. Right now I'm, I'm neck deep in the trenches of it. I'm, it's too early to say I've got validation for all the things because some, some people, you know, uh, they celebrate too early and then things go wrong and uh, they, eat, they eat their crow, you know, and, but I feel like I'm on the right path of doing things my way. Like even like my, my tag on every form of social media is the Akira way. I'm doing things my way. So I will have that validation when a year, two years, three years down the road, I can look back and it, you know, it benefited my career. And it puts me in an even better place. And I go, there's my validation. I didn't say I had validation for my tenure in ICW until like last year where I, I looked where I was at and all the people that had started doing death matches had petered off into, into the ether. Um, you know, they'd fallen away. And I'm still like that first original young guy from 2020 post COVID that's still remaining. Um, I'm still, you know, doing things in the public eye and, making people still interested in death matches. So when, huge, when, it comes, when it comes to feeling that validation, I tend to give it two to three years before I can go, there's my validation. But gotcha. it's a- I feel like, so, so I, I'm a huge Beyond fan. So I think by fault, that makes me a Ricky Shane Page fan one way or another. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um. You know, it, is it kind of like when you, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but you didn't really know that MLW had signed you until your phone started blowing up? Um, things like, I, I, it was set in stone probably at the beginning of the year, but I didn't know it, like, because, you know, Fightful had come out about it, and right. generally that means, okay, I think you're going to hear about it in, like, two to three weeks. Right. But then they did it. Like it, basically, like all of my announcements got announced at a very good time to spike, you know, interest in my name. And it was just very. Uh, I was I wasn't ready for it when they actually did it. You know, I was like I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it, and they didn't do it. I go okay, whatever, what, whatever, you know. And then they did it. And everyone's like, whoa, my god! And I go, oh, okay. So yeah, I I, I didn't know. I I I tend to find all things through social media. Um, like all the uh. The curious little uh, happenings of my social media life or my wrestling life, I, I find out through that, and I go, oh, okay, that's happening, cool. Like the um, like what was it like last year, like the, when Mox wore my hoodie thing? I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my I, literally, I was in the gym, and I was I was warming up, going through, my, getting ready to start. Uh, I got off the treadmill, or whatever it was, and all of a sudden my phone starts burning and i'm like my phone's vibrating freaking out. i thought someone had died again <laughs> and i go what is I happening you on that. and then i look at my phone and i go oh 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 go text my shirt maker go hey hey give me that design i gotta get that online so people could buy it that's all i thought and i i texted Mosh and i go uh what is happening and she goes um something cool and i go oh okay i guess 
like literally all these things that I found out were just through social media. Always, it's always been that way. Like a lot of my match announcements, I find out through social media. Um, personal things, I find out through social media. I go, oh, that's what I'm doing. You know? Are you? Uh, are you? Is it fun? Like, because we interviewed Masha about two years ago before. She came over here. She she did it. I think she was still in Japan. So I was up at six in the morning. Um, how how fun is it to be able to travel uh, with and sometimes work with and alongside? And like you guys are really putting your this is what puts the relationship to a test. I think is when you're like you're always in the same space. Either you're sure. you're really doing the same thing, but you really you find out first. Like, can you be friends or be friends first, mm-hmm. and then relationship next? But can you? Is it, it how how does it work, man? How does it work for you guys? <laughs> uh, your guess is as good as ours. We just we do what we do. Um, we I mean we were friends first, you know. Uh, when I did, I jumped off the roof. She was in Japan. Uh, she saw it. She liked it. Uh, I guess I, I we, you will you will get a different answer depending on who you're asking and who followed who first, but that's what happened. We just we you know we shoot sporadic messages. You know, back and forth, she'd do something. Like, she changed her hair to, like, I think it was, like, blonde. And, you know what? Hold on. Hold on. Shit. Hey, when you changed your hair, when I texted you that one time when you were in Japan, and you said, what was Rogue's hair? It was, like, blonde and red, right? When you were in Japan? Yeah. I said, you're rogue looking ass. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it was. Like I'd, I'd send her stuff like that. She'd send me stuff. Um, she's over here eating goldfish and, um, like we, that's just how we, we just kept in contact. We became friends that way. And then, uh, boardwalk buzz, come on, boardwalk buzz, uh, in AC is when we met for the first time. Uh, but especially when it comes to being on the road and being on shows and always being in communication, always being around each other, like it's exasperating sometimes. There's there's always times uh there's times where she's like, get the fuck away from me, and I go, get away from me, <laughs> like. But um because I I think because we're always near each other all the time, we go through more tests. Then you know a lot of other couples do, but it's also we come out on the other side better because we we stick through it and we we get all these experiences now rather than you know a lot of couples who will you know see each other like once or twice or three times a week and they'll invest four to five years in a relationship and they actually come to live together and it's it all crashes and burns. We're getting that experience now, um, but it's definitely I think been better for myself and I'd, I'd like to think she'd think for herself. Um, personally and professionally well the cool thing for me is i've been able to watch it from afar and like even when you guys are different places doing different things you're still connecting through twitter because that's i can't imagine like when she signed with impact and you signed with mlw how how much of your social media like how much is that do you like it's it's a it's another job right i i don't take social media that seriously like it's a tool it's a tool, but like it's, I'm I'm here to have money, make make fun. So people make social media their life, and I'm just like, I'm here to have a laugh. I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to make money. Um, some people it's like, the, um, their Bible, and I just, I'm very much uh, ambivalent when it comes to it. I'm very hands off. You know, I I see things I like, I tweet it, I retweet it, I move on. You know, I don't. I'm not someone who is openly shitting on something 24 seven, like some people, um, which is, if that's their vice, cool. Good for them. Just, it's just not for me. What, um, what do you think is going to be the most exciting part? Uh, like I, honesty, like I dropped Hulu because I mm-hmm. couldn't watch raw live and I didn't have reels and I picked up sling so I could continue to watch MLW. Mm-hmm. Um, how excited are you to continue uh, one like because we interviewed Del- Delmia XO and we talked to Alex Kane, and the common theme that I keep seeing is like the the people that are there that are working are bringing it every time you guys are together. Like it's just elevated every time 
it's because the drive is there. Like, where do you see yourself like five, six years from now? Where, where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? <laughs> Honestly, Japan. Um, like, I don't have these grandiose dreams of going to WWE, which generally that's how that happens. You don't have the dream of going there and then you guys somehow wind up there. Um, but Japan is where I want to be. Um, I would like to be killing it on the indies. You know, maybe I do things for a TV promotion here that let me go do whatever I want. Um, but I would like to have tenure in Japan and, uh, you know, go there, do tour, come back, go to tour, come back. I like to be that kind of guy. And then, you know, after that, who knows? Um, like I, I've, I've joked with, uh, a couple of people, um, like people, people will see, people always ask me because they'll see me uh, interact with uh, Shayna Baszler on, uh, on Twitter. Yeah. Sometimes. And, um, they're like, you know, I'm like, yeah, we like, we literally became friends through just through wrestling through, cause I do, I do a double wrist lock and I'll always throw like some, <clears throat> some Vulcan, you know, EWFI, some ring stuff. And it, it always pops her. And we became friends that way. And we just talk about wrestling. But her and uh, Mia Yim, like Mia, Mia, <laughs> Mia texted me. She, Mia is one of the people that advised me um, when I was thinking about it. She was like, "You should do it. You should sign with MLW." She's like, "It's," she's like, "It'll be a good experience for you. Get your name out there, and it's gonna definitely differentiate you from all the other deathmatch guys." Um, and she's like, "And then when you're done, she's like, you can come and you can be uh, Shannon and I's uh, little green boy and carry our bags in WWE." And I was like, "If it pays well, sure," but. Um, like that's, I guess that's also the thing about my career is I'm very uh, relaxed about where I'm going to end up, wind up next because that's generally how my career has been. It's, I guess, relax. I go with the flow. You know, follow, follow the winding road, and wherever it takes me, it takes me. I'm not going to try to force something to happen that's not going to happen. You know, because then you sit there and you fight and you fight and you fight and you get so bitter and entangled over it and when it doesn't happen what do you do you become that bitter person that you didn't want to be and i've never wanted to be that bitter person that hates wrestling hates other wrestlers hates young wrestlers and i'm only doing this for the paycheck there's too many of those nowadays and i'm like that's not conducive to a healthy uh relationship with professional wrestling because i fell in love with professional wrestling from a pure standpoint now are there things that make me hate pro wrestling sometimes yes but it's that temporary, like, when you're mad at your significant other, and you're like, I fucking right. hate you. Yeah. And in the back of your head, you're like, I don't hate you. Why did I say that? That's so shitty, petty, and mean. Or it's like with him. <laughs> There's something. I'll be like, why? Why would you do this? Why? Oh my gosh. You make me hate you. But in reality, I'm like, I don't hate him. He's my best friend. Like, I love him. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's the same for wrestling. Like I'll I'll get so mad and, and angry about something, and I go, I don't hate it. I just hate this thing that's happening. Okay, whatever, move on. I'm very not a I'm not a tense person. I'm not a very angry person. And basically, whatever happens in pro wrestling happens. You know, if something winds up where, say tomorrow, I have to retire. Right. Okay. That's just that's how that's life. You can't fight life. You can't be bitter towards life. These things happen and you just have to roll with it. You have to roll on to the next thing, you know, you have to take what life gave you and, you know, find something else, you know, and which is also why you invest in doing other things. You invest in finding other hobbies. So that way you're not so engrossed in pro wrestling that it's all that you think about too, because that'll make you hate pro wrestling too, I think. Um, Because even like the, the world's best musicians don't play music all the time. They have a right. hobby they do because when they focus on these other hobbies, they get inspiration for their art and that makes their art even better. Um, but that's just what I think, you know, everyone has their own vice, everyone has their own takes on, on it. But where do I want to be in five years? Japan, you know, I want to be in Japan. I want to be a regular in Japan. That's, that's what I want to do. And in 10 years, who knows? Maybe AEW, maybe WWE. Who knows? Who knows what the landscape's gonna be in ten years? Who knows if pro wrestling's gonna be a thing in ten years? It's gonna be a thing in ten years, but that's just you know the standard phrase that people will say of 
or it's not even going to exist. I mean, it's going to exist, but who knows? You know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the landscape's always changing. Um, I think for me, MLW, and we were conversing on Twitter a lot the other night after the show is um, to production is amazing. Um, the way it's presented. And I made this point to me, it reminds me of old school NWA because the floor, like mm-hmm. whatever you guys, whatever MLW ever does, like don't change the floor. <laughs> don't change the mats. Don't change any of that. Cause I see uh, it for me, it's a huge mix of, like a Lucha Underground, like with Matt Stryker and all the other stuff, like just that presentation with the aesthetics that are around the ring. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's it's those little things that catch the mind's eye that we, for people like me, they've been watching it for a while, like, oh, it's a familiar thing that we see yeah. and we gravitate towards it. Um, it's, it's got that smoky uh, WCW vibe from like uh, – like 95, 96, you know, when NWO was in 97, when NWO really, really started to take over. And like the, it, you had the entire stadium, there's just, just that smoke, like in the crowd. Like I feel that vibe a lot too. Um, and this older NWAs too, I do agree. Lucha Underground aspects. Um, some say might say Wrestling Society X. Oh, absolutely. Um, hey, cool. Good. That's a deep dive right there. Perfect. Yeah, That's um, awesome. And I, I think too, there's a, a little tinge of like ROH, a little a little tinge of ROH in there, but the production is definitely because um, I remember I, I, two years ago, three years ago, I used to, before the pandemic, I'd like watched a little bit of MLW, um, and I'd say the production has upped its game a lot too. Um, I always go and say hi to the production guys before we, um, you know, we even start the day because like if you don't say hi to those guys, we don't have a show. So like they make us look really good. Um, they, but the, like I, I've watched the clips, you know, and the the graphics and the uh, the the video of Raven, Ricky, and I. It's just like you look at that and you're like, that's a high quality product, you know. And with the presentation on reels, you know, it's been drawing more eyes, more, you know, we've been doing really good numbers, and it's really, uh, I'm really happy to see it, and I hope at the end of this run that we're doing, you know, that they pick us up for more or another place goes, you know, no, this is a really good thing. We got to, we got to snatch this up because people seem really excited for it. People seem excited for the product. And I, myself and Ricky got on at a really good time, you know, especially because we're kind of one of the centers of attention now. Yeah. And I, to, to be perfectly honest, it's why I dropped Hulu. It's why I picked up sling so I could add, add reels on there. That's, I mean, it sold me and I'm, it's just because I'm a, I'm a fan of death matches and I've been forever. And mm-hmm. the I think you hit on it earlier when you were talking about going back and watching matches and like the psychology that even Ricky Shane page, when Mansur went last night, mm-hmm. a psychology in those matches for me helps that get over. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it tells the story eloquently enough. I believe that if, Somebody's offended by blood. They're not. They're probably going to be able to accept it a little more. But how hard is it for you to do like a back? I see you. Even people that do death matches like back to backs. You're doing like a Saturday Sunday. You might be doing like GCW. You might like. How is it to go from that Friday night to that Saturday night, and you guys are still delivering in every match? So let me. I'll tell you like. 2020 to 2021 probably took a year or two off my life. Just how the amount of death matches I was doing. Um, 2021 summer, there was a string of shows in Indianapolis and it was ICW affiliated. And I was on eight shows and I think one was non death match. Like it was a tournament, three other shows. And then I did a UBFI match, which was like, so relaxing and such a breath of fresh air. But it was within two and a half to three days. I got really bad cuts on my arm um, from a, just a huge pane of glass. And I probably wrestled an hour and a half over the course of those two and a half days. And it was, oh, I, and I, I, the, last, the last show, I, could, I couldn't walk. I had rolled my ankle so bad. Like, um, but one of my friends, um, who I'm in a group, I'm in a group on the Indies with, uh, Killer Be Killed, Hardway Heater. Yeah. Uh, like we, our music was playing, 
and he had to carry me out because I was hobbling so bad. When I got in the ring, like my adrenaline started going and I could kind of function better. But by the end of it, I was, I was a mess. Um, but it wasn't like it was, it was killing any kind of a uh, creativity I had in the ring. It was just like, it was, you, you roll your ankle, you roll your ankle. It's hard to walk, man. Right. But I, I just power through it. I don't know what, like what it is. Like I can get through that entire, I can get through eight crazy death matches in a weekend. But it's that Monday, it's the day after where I'm like, I'm laying there going, okay, don't talk to me. I'm dead. I'm dead now. This, this, this is where I die. Like it's, it's not a matter of getting through the weekend. It's, it's getting through the, the day after when that hangover, when the adrenaline's gone and your body's going, brother, why did we do this to ourselves? And I go, cause the money was okay. Right. <laughs> um, Luckily, that's not, you know, my life anymore um, because, man, like, seriously, 2020 and 2021, people look at my back and they go, what happened? I go, literally those two years. Those two years just shredded my body and my knees. Like, my knees went to, to shit at the end of 2020. <laughs> I, I've, I don't know if, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was somewhere near like 200 matches during that time frame that you were in. Oh, Close God, to I, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't it was know. a lot. Like my my first year, um, I went and I wrestled for free a lot. Um, I would go to like these fair shows where they would have they'd have me do three or four matches in one day because I wanted to do the experience. I'd say, yeah, I'd do it. You know, it was it was local. I could do three or four matches with people that weren't very good, but you know, you get in there with these guys that aren't experienced and or that aren't good. And you have to work with them and you learns the do's and the don'ts, you know, um, that first year though, I had maybe, I don't remember like 190 to 240 matches. And my back was already starting to be bad around that point. And I was wondering why. And I go, cause you're wrestling all, all this for like no money. But you know, it, once again, those experiences made me who I am. So I, I do I regret them? No. Do I, do I tell people get paid? Yes. <laughs> You're probably like me. Like I, I gotta. So I save this question as the last question. Um, so what? What are your, what are your strains? What are your go tos? Uh, for you, for me, I'm a, I'm a Bubba Kush, Gorilla Glue, no. maybe some sour diesel type of guy. I don't know uh, strains for the life of me. I take what Masha gives me, and she says smoke, and I go. <laughs> I think what people give me. Um, but I am a huge, huge edible person. Um, probably to my own detriment because when I'm on edibles, I am a whole different animal. I become a crazy person. Um, <laughs> like I'm, I, re- I, re- I read a tweet about something about an orchestra in your mouth or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, Okay, well, let me put context to it, okay? Because the way she she said it, it makes me sound like a crazy person, which I am. But there's context to it. So after the uh, Chattanooga ICW show, I went to the hotel, and we stopped, and we got this place called Cookout. And Cookout, you can get you can spend twelve dollars and get like so much delicious food. It's it's so good beyond the realm of comprehension. But I got all this food. I hadn't ate a lot all day. And I take this gummy. And I sat there in the hotel room, tired. And I took this bite of this most delicious double cheeseburger. And it was like an orchestra. It was fucking me in the mouth. I was like, <laughs> it, was like it was like chomp. Ugh, music playing in my ears. And I was like, heaven. And then I got Seinfeld playing in the background. And so... As this is happening, as this rush of beauty hits me, I hear doom, ding, 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 dum, 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 and I'm like, this is this is life. This is what life was meant to be. <laughs> and then she calls me, and I tell her this, and she's like, oh, that's a tweet. And I go, oh, okay. And then nice. She did and then she did it. She didn't even she didn't even put that I was eating food. It would have made sense to people then. She's a crazy <laughs> person. No, it was over. It didn't matter. Context was not necessary. It was over. Just like, okay, rewind. She put out a tweet like maybe a year ago 
um, where it was like Kitchen Nightmare or yeah, Kitchen Nightmares, but it's um, William Regal and I think whoever else, and they go to these indie promotions and they fix the promotions, and I, that was my idea that I came up as high as a kite, and <laughs> she she took it for I said I was going to tweet it. She goes okay, and she tweets it like the next day, and I go. How could you? And then it just takes off. Yeah. It's going on Reddit. It's going on everywhere else. And I'm sitting there doing this going. I look at her and she goes, oh, baby, don't worry. Like, more people care about my tweets than yours anyway. And I go, that's besides the point. Yeah, right. Well, like and Eric Bickhoff said, it, it, any publicity is good publicity. Good oh, it's no, it's worse because then she basically did like, uh, like the worst thing ever. And she puts – after she gets all the retweets and everything, she puts it in and she goes, credit at the Akira win. I go, thanks, honey. Cool. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I'll open up Google and I'll I'll open up a new tab and it'll be like, Masha Slamovich tweets out this funny tweet. And I go, really? Motherfucker, that was my idea. <laughs> and she'll still, she will still defend her actions to this thing and go, no, nah, it was a good tweet. It was a good tweet. <laughs> it would he got more traction from my Twitter, and I go, I hate you. <laughs> uh, man, man, I really appreciate the time. Uh, I'm gonna end this here, but I want you to hold on real quick. Um, thanks again so much for taking the time. Like I know you're busy, and um, dude, I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking the time. I know how hard it is, and your busy schedule, and what you're going on. But it, it means a lot to us, and it means a lot to our listeners. So thanks for taking the time, man. Not a problem, man. And anybody, any promotions that are listening, I would like to be busier. Hit me up. But well, no, I, like, I'm, I love doing these kinds of things. I love sitting here talking about wrestling, man. It's, it's part of what we do. And if, if you can't sit here and talk about how much you love something, you know, it's. I think you don't really love it. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I'm gonna end this, and we're gonna talk about getting you out west. How about that? All right. Uh, Tiwf, it's a Yeti uh, wrestling news source with the Akira Way from Major League Wrestling and. Uh, just another death match, God. We appreciate your time, man.